readers who don't really know about the project, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on with Destroy the Silence and sort of how you got the idea? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so basically, I, I come from the technology world, and uh, and I think unlike many other people who create music, I look at it from a real like data-driven approach. So I was sitting there the day before the iPad launch, like a lot of other geeks sitting in front of an Apple store, um, <laughs> waiting in line for my iPad that I already had a reservation for. So go figure, right? But I'm sitting out there, and I was really bored because uh, it was 2.30 in the morning, and I had like six more hours to go. So I was thinking, you know, what can I do? And I was looking through the app store on my iPhone and just looking for, like, what applications were out there and what was currently out for the iPad, even though there wasn't, you know, an iPad in, in the world yet. So in doing so, I... I kind of found a bunch of these creation apps and sequencers and all these music apps and I didn't realize it until after I had downloaded no joke $200 worth of apps <laughs> I was like wow I think I've downloaded a bunch of music apps here and wow. so I started thinking um uh you know th this could really be the start of something and you know people have talked about the idea of like an iPad DJ just conceptually but you know I actually have a music background so I was thinking about the you know, implementation of this and, and how do you actually become an iPad DJ? So, uh, again, kind of sitting in line and <laughs> just formulating ideas. And when I got my iPad, I went home and I installed all the apps that I had purchased and I started playing around with it. And it was through that I noticed, like, this is really fun. It's actually a very enjoyable experience to create music on the iPad. So I started thinking, like, what am I going to need? And the first probably five days of my experiment were spent kind of hacking um, and figuring out, you know, okay, so I can't really record audio if I, you know, if I do this and do that, if I get these cables, you know, maybe I can do it. So the first five days were really just technical. And <laughs> and uh, so, I, but I got through it and I figured out that if I get, you know, three RCA cables that go to a mini jack adapter and I plug them into my iPads and I can run two at a time. And, you know, if I get a DJ mixer, maybe I can use that. And I just started acquiring a bunch of gear and pretty much lived at Guitar Center. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, but finally I got my setup and then I started practicing. And um, for the next five days, it, you know, was just pure um, blood, sweat and tears, I guess. And, uh, but then I came together with like a pretty cool set. So fortunately, at the same time, I was planning on going to San Francisco for the iPad developer conference. It's like a camp. People spend the weekend hacking on apps. And I thought, you know, I know the organizers. Let me see if they'll let me just play. So I wanted to play for five minutes. That was my goal. Five minute set, which, you know, doesn't seem that hard. But when you're switching back and forth between apps, and I'm sure a lot of your readers know there isn't multitasking on the iPhone. So right. you've got these two machines with, you know, the mind of their own. And I'm sitting here trying to make them match up in terms of the beats and the BPMs and, um, you know, the sounds to make them sound good. And so five minutes was a pretty lofty goal. And I started playing. And while I was up there, suddenly it was like 15 minutes had gone by and I was still pretty comfortable. And, um, and I got a little tired. So I was like, okay, well maybe, you know, 15 minutes, I'm sure these people are bored, you know? And, uh, I started kind of lowering the, uh, the levels and, and, you know, powering off. And then I heard some booze in the front row and I was like, that's messed up. I, I why, why would people do that? And they were like, no, 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 keep going, keep going. <laughs> I was like, are you guys serious? And they said, yeah, 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 I really like what you're doing. Like keep, you know, keep playing. So I ended up playing for like a full 45 minutes that day. And, uh, and that actually surprised me because I didn't even know that, I could play that long using only stock applications. Yeah. Um, and that, that's another big point of my experiment is that, you know, I'm not doing this for creative purposes. I'm doing it more to demonstrate that this device is really powerful and you don't need anything crazy. Like anybody who wants can play music using, using iPad. They can learn piano on it. They can learn, you know, um, music theory on it. They can do a lot with it. So that is really what I'm doing. There's no computers in my set. And, um, and yeah, it's so, you know, I'm only using apps that you can buy on the app store. And I think that's really important just to show people, you know, if you if you just have the guts, I guess, to go out and, you know, just try something, you really you can make some pretty compelling stuff. Cool. So, I mean, I can imagine people hearing, oh, $200 on apps, you know, that <laughs> sounds like a lot. But actually, if you think about it, and, you know, I, I started playing with Looptastic 
HD last night, which is yeah. like the coolest thing since sliced bread. Right. Right. And I would compare it favorably to something like Ableton Live, which you would pay, you know, upwards of a few hundred dollars for. And some of these other apps too, like uh, the Korg iElect Drive, it's basically a $10 app that replicates a $400 piece of hardware. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that. I mean, like how, how much do you think this compares to sort of what you would spend for a traditional DJ setup, both in terms of software and hardware? Well, I, I love that question, and I want to kind of back up a second and, and just address one thing. I spent $200 on apps because I'm crazy, and I bought <laughs> every single app you could buy, right? So like, that isn't what you're going to do. And, and people you know, people have asked me the past couple of days, like, how do I become an iPad DJ? And I say, well, the first thing you do is pick what you want to do. Like, do you want to do hip-hop? Do you want to do electro? Do you want to do uh, trance? Like, what do you want to do? And I think that having that idea for kind of vision is helpful in saying, Okay, well, I'm going to do hip hop. So I'm going to get the IK Multimedia Groove Maker, you know, the house, I mean, the hip hop edition, and I'm going to use that and start there. That's $10. That's not a big investment. And I sort of look at it like anybody who wants to become a DJ, they've got to buy like two CDJs or two turntables. They've got to buy a laptop if they don't, you know, have a laptop already. And they have to run Serato. They've got to buy all the software. Like you said, Ableton Live's got to be running. I mean, that, I look at it like, it probably costs 3500 bucks to get started um, if you want to get decent stuff. So that being said, I look at my setup, and it costs me $1,400 for everything, including all the apps. Like, that's, you know, it's not too bad. That includes cables. That includes audio interface for recording. That's, that's soup to nuts. So I, I actually think that cost barrier doesn't exist with iPad, and I guess people can disagree with me. But, um, but I think... I think, you know, if you're going to talk about it from a professional standpoint, okay, fine, maybe you want to just go the traditional route and run Serato and, you know, get your get your Pioneer mixer and, you know, just do it that way. But I think that this is the first time where people who have a curiosity don't really have to deal with that barrier and they can just try stuff. Like, I, I, I kind of uh, equate it to when – when Apple started pre-installing iLife and it included garage bands, right. um, I think right. a lot of college students who, um, you know, were, were buying Macs for the first time, for instance, they had access to a, you know, relatively robust piece of, you know, recording software. And I think that inspired a generation of, you know, music makers. So because of that, I'd say it's, you know, don't look at it like, oh, well, I don't know if DJ Tiesto is going to be able to switch his whole rig to iPad. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. You know, uh, I can't disagree with you there. But but for someone like me, I never I never wanted to try DJing because um, I didn't know if I was going to like it. And I come from a music theory background, but, you know, I was like, I think I could be a good DJ. I just, you know, I don't know. Do I want to go buy all that gear? And what happens if I don't like it? And, you know, so I just, it was really, it was prohibitive to me. Um, whereas in this case, I already have the iPad and I can use it for checking Twitter and I can use it for reading Mashable and I can, you know, I can do so much more with it than just the music implementation. So I think that really is, com is, is compelling to people. And if you already have one, I mean, like I have two, but you don't really need two if you want to make music on it. You just need one. So in that sense, I'd say it's kind of a unlikely comparison mm -hmm. um but i mean i just i really do see that as if this is going to be a laptop replacement then you've got to look at it like that and sort of try to make it do as much as you can for the money you're paying for because they're still pretty expensive cool so you have a music background but have you dj'd before or is this your first <laughs> jump off into that land Thing, right? No, I've never DJed, but you know, I have friends that are DJs and I've worked in the music industry. And so, you know, it's sort of, it's like those colloquial sort of jokes that you make about beat matching and beat juggling and scratching and just things that have sort of become in the common, you know, vernacular when it comes to music culture. A lot of that is DJ stuff. So I have a lot of respect for what DJs do and a lot of curiosity about it. So I've never DJed until, uh, five days ago <laughs> when, <Wow>. I, <laughs> when I officially had like the two set, two iPads and the mixer and just kind of, so literally five days of DJ. But, um, but that being said, I think that when you understand music, um, or actually, you know, if you listen to a lot of music and you have, you have a vision for what you want to create, I think that, you know, you can, you can really figure it out. Apps like Looptastic and, uh, and again, that IK Multimedia suite, what I like about them is that you can, you know, it, 
it, you don't have to be so precise. It does a lot of kind of the legwork for you and it will sync beats together for you and it won't, uh, it won't make you look like an idiot. Right. So <laughs> because of that, I think, I think it's good for beginners. And, uh, and I include myself in that because in the past week I've gotten a lot better at this, but you know, I'm not, I'm not going around saying, Oh, I'm the best DJ ever. And I happen to do it on iPad. I'm saying like, let's, let's look at this and let's see what this means for the industry. Because right now I can fit my entire rig into a laptop bag. And who else can say that? I'm talking like I can fit the mixer, my headphones, all the cables, both iPads and power chargers into just a regular laptop bag. And you would never suspect that I was carrying all this gear with me. So I think, you know, I think that's a big deal. Totally. Yeah. So portability is key. And then I think it's also interesting in that one of the major criticisms of the iPad from the beginning was sort of, oh, it's designed as a consumption device. You're supposed to sit back on the couch and surf the web. And this is kind of a, a prime counterexample of, of how it, it, it doesn't need to be that way. What do, you, what do you think it is about the iPad specifically that makes it interesting as a new creative tool? I think that's actually fascinating because when I got the iPad the first day, I sent a tweet out and I said, to me, the iPad is a creation and consumption device and my laptop is now where I refine content. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing audio recording, for instance, I'm sitting there and tweaking things for hours or if I'm editing a blog post or a manuscript or something, that's what my laptop is for. But to be perfectly honest, for the first probably eight days that I had my iPad, I didn't touch my laptop. And I had the laptop with me, but I just chose not to use it. And so, you know, to me, I think that's sort of a cop out, like, fine, there isn't a USB input. So I can't just plug in a synth and, you know, use it or anything like that. So you've got to get a little more creative. And I hope that this will start people, you know, in, in that direction of thinking, you know, about what's possible. Because I think, like you said, portability is key. So if you have that ability and you can do things like, you know, I'm, I've been trying when I, when I was uh, I'm traveling now, so my product's been a little, you know, delayed. But when I was home, I was trying to solder together, like, a dock connector that would go to a guitar cable. Or, I was, like, trying to do some stuff. So, I, you know, we have to also take a step back and realize this device has only been out for, what, like, less than three weeks, okay? We're still at two and a half weeks of owning this thing. And these developers that put out these apps that, for instance, I'm using – um, they didn't even have iPads before they released the app. Yeah. So, you know, right? Like, the perspective is, is important. And um, and because of that, I look at it like the apps that are going to come out over the next six months are going to be really impressive. So just, you know, you, you've got to be open to it. And, and you have to be willing to try. I mean, like, I had to download $200 worth of apps before I found the five that I use, right? So it's just, you, it's, it's, a, it's a two-way street. Developers have to listen to the users, but... Um, I think you also have to be willing to experiment. Cool. So can you tell us just quickly what those five favorite apps are? And would you recommend them specifically for beginners also trying to, you know, get into DJing for the first time? Sure. Um, well, yes. I think everything that I'm using is is pretty um, it's pretty basic. I, you know, I will preface that by saying that I kind of look at making music on the iPad like cooking. It's It's just like cooking. Anybody can buy the ingredients, but... If, you know, you have to have a certain kind of, you know, um, vision and, and taste and kind of, you know, um, intent for what you're doing. And that's what makes music good or, or not good. And, you know, like a lot of these apps, you can just hit play and it will play music and that's fine. But it's the manipulation of that and figuring out what sounds you like and preferences. And that, that's where you have to invest the time. Um, so I use, like, for instance, I'll just kind of walk you through my set as it currently is. Cool. I start with this app called Beatwave, and I do that because it's um, it's a blank slate, and when you touch the interface, it's really colorful and beautiful, and you can choose the different tones that you want, and you basically create uh, a melody by by touch. And so it starts out where I just I touch one button, and like it will you know just like one sweet tone that goes by, and you're like, what's going on? And then suddenly I like make this huge cacophony, right? And so um, then what I'll do is I'll I'll take that and then. I will use the DJ mixer, and then I'll kind of mix in a little bit of the Korg app that you mentioned, the iElectronic, uh, which I do own the hardware version of. So I, uh, <laughs> I look at it like, oh, I just bought this for 10 bucks, and I also have the $400 one. So, um, But I, I mix in, um, for me, for instance, 
I like mixing the beat wave with the minimal two setting on the ILF tribe, and I lower the BPM or beats per minute down to about 120 or so, and that sort of syncs up with what I'm doing on the beat wave. So now I've got these two playing together. I've got this minimal house. Um, a minimal techno beat rather and I've got you know the beat wave they're doing this really interesting thing then when I feel like it's at a uh, ripe point if you will I will switch over to entirely the the Korg app and then I'll open up the IK Multimedia Groove Maker app um, and I like the house app for instance so meanwhile like the, to the listeners um, people are hearing the Korg app that's all the audio that they're getting meanwhile I'm with my DJ headphones previewing what I'm going to be doing with the Groove Maker app so it's pretty cool in that sense because I can, I can sit and tweak stuff and come up with ideas while the audience is still enjoying the previous beat. And I think that's very similar to traditional DJing, right? Like the idea of cueing and, and things like that. So then what I'll do is uh, either I will just completely eliminate the first one or I'll move only to, you know, and move only to the Groove Maker app or I'll sort of do a comp. Um, and then Groove Maker makes a series of these apps. So I use like the hip hop one, trance one, just a, a you know, they have a plethora of, uh, of sound libraries. So I use that. And then I usually close out my set with, uh, with Looptastic. I like that one a lot because I'm able to very easily set the BPM and then go through and, um, and manipulate sounds and, and kind of mix genres that I like. So I can mix like a break beat with a trance, you know, synth line, and then I can, you know, just quickly go back and forth. And the libraries are pretty, pretty robust, so I like them. Um, I think it's about five. Oh, and another fifth one is uh, one, one of the signatures, I guess, of the iPad DJ uh, set is the iDaft app. I use that a lot, and so I'll just like randomly throw in Daft Punk, and people love it. <laughs> and uh, and it's fun because it's the app, you know, you can play the beat, um, the underlying beat, and um, and then you have these pads, and when you touch them, it just you know it triggers the sound effects from the song. So it's it's really fun, and people can see like how this is different, right? Because they're watching you touch a button and then or touch touch the screen rather, and then something happens immediately. So there, there is that high, uh, you know, the factor of like instant gratification when it comes to uh, to the visual and the audio. And I think that in in normal DJ setups, you don't really get that. Um, so you know, that, that's pretty much my my set. But you know, like I said, these apps that are coming out um, over the next, I mean, even like three four weeks are going to be really amazing. So I'm going to be using those. But uh, but just as you know, for the time being, this is what I've got. <laughs> Cool. So it sounds like the, the audience response has been pretty good so far. What other kind of responses are you getting? I, you know, I've, I've seen a bunch of stories rolling already. Are people Crazy. contacting you right and left now? for, for Yeah, gigs? I've had some pretty amazing uh, opportunities pop up. I, I have a booking agent now, and I'm like, I'm like wait a minute. I, I built like an analytics company before this. Like, what do you mean I have a booking agent? Cool. But, uh, but it's, it's funny, and I've, I've been asked to play a bunch of places, and, uh, and I'm just kind of getting ready for that. And besides that, I mean, Gizmodo ran a big story about, about what I'm doing, and that really caught me by surprise. I didn't expect that. And um, what else? I don't know. Just a lot of publications that I really respect. I just did a piece for DJ uh, DJ Times, which you know is really well respected in the industry. And uh, yeah, just the past couple of days, I look at it like you know that tells me something really important. It means that people are very excited about the possibilities. And at the end of the day, I am I'm a technologist, and I I look at this like uh, sort of from from the macro perspective, and I'm looking for the next you know, paradigm shift in computing. And that is, that is portables, right? And so I, I was fascinated with mobile before this, starting with iPhone, iPad's an extension of that. And so if, if people are looking at this and it inspires them to play music or it gets them curious about what can be done and the potentials and, you know, limitations and how to break through barriers of, you know, what, what Apple set up. I mean, I, I look at it like all of that is excellent. And, uh, and if that's the only thing that comes from this, then I, I, I think I've done my small, you know, part of, uh, of uh, setting, setting the pace, I guess. But besides that, I mean, I just, you know, I'm, I'm really having a great time, which I think is the most important. Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of uh, the future and what's coming, uh, what, you know, now coming from this perspective as a DJ using this device specifically, what would you like to see in the next version of the iPad that would make it even more super awesome for this particular application? That's an awesome question. Um, I think multitasking is going to be the 
biggest game changer for what I'm doing. Because right now, I have no room for error. If I make a small mistake or if my app crashes or something, like I'm screwed. I can't I can't do anything because I you know, I'm running these two apps simultaneously. So having the ability to, for instance, before I walk on stage or, you know, wherever I'm playing, um, set up what I want to do and then just have them readily available where I can just filter through and, and sort and pick what I want to do. I think that's really going to increase the, um, the range of what you can do right now. I look at it like, okay, well, so what are the apps where I know that I can seamlessly transition? And if it's anything that involves more than a couple of keystrokes of, if you will, uh, it's just not worth it for me because it's, it's too risky. Right. So I think that multitasking is going to be a really big deal. And I also think that there can be some really cool video components to come from this like video remixing I think that that would be just awesome and you look at it like you've got a touch device so anything that you can imagine where manipulation you know could be visual I think that's going to be really cool so I hope that the a4 chip is in the new um uh iPhone too because if that's the case like I'd love to be able to plug in an iPhone and two iPads and now I've got a really amazing setup but um but yeah so I, I just look at it like you know, first of all, the modality, like people, people being able to test the apps that they're building while holding a device, that's going to make a big difference. And then also the 4.0 OS is going to be huge. So those two things are, are probably the biggest deal. Cool. cool. I, I was thinking it would be cool too to have a, a line in so then you could use it as a big effects box, just run uh. something through. Well, I mean, listen, I, I could talk about it, but my heart flutters. So <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to get my hopes up. I'm looking at it like, my gosh, if I had USB, like, I could do the sickest things with it. But um, besides that, you know, I, I think it's just, you know, I, I know that there's a certain um, range of what Apple wants to do, too. And, like, so for me, a line-in would be awesome. But what does that really do for Apple? And so if it's not something where there's a direct correlation, then I don't think it's necessarily relevant. Right. Um, so, like, in, in that case, I just think that people are going to come up with these really fantastic third peripherals, right? Where you plug in through a dock connector and now you've got a firewire cable or something like that, you know, that stuff is coming. Awesome. Um, but I just, it's just, that's going to be someone else's effort that lines that up <laughs> for all of us to benefit from. Cool. Well, I can't wait. And, uh, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. How can, uh, readers keep up with, with what you're up to? Well, I think, uh, probably the fastest way is my Twitter account. It's at Rana June. And uh, I'm chronicling everything I'm doing on DestroyTheSilence.com, which is a play off of uh, one of my favorite Depeche Mode songs. And I kind of, I hope that has to do with the disruption that's coming from, <laughs> you know, having these portable computers. But, um, but besides that, yeah, I'd say, I'd say Twitter, checking Destroy the Silence, and there's a Facebook fan page where I'm posting, like, um, dates where I'm going to be playing and, uh, and things like that. So, uh, but I, I'm, you know, I'm a digital creature, so I'm, I'm always available. And if anyone has any questions, you can... You can send me messages, and I'm I'm I sleep with the iPhone next to me, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm one of those. You're but, in good uh, company here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that a lot of people can understand uh, at least that basic. <laughs> it's so comforting to know at any moment I can check Twitter. I mean, <laughs> oh man, absolutely. But, uh, but yeah. So, but I, I really welcome any feedback and, and questions, and, and like I said, I mean, I, that I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything that is, you know, more, um, I don't know, I guess over the top than, than what you're currently seeing. It's, it's not, it's not meant to be a creative outlet for me. It's more of an execution play, and I'm, I'm just trying to kind of demonstrate what you can do. But I, I think, like for instance, uh, just. Closing thought. I mentioned uh, to Robert Scoble when he interviewed me. I kind of, kind of leaked the surprise, but now that it's out, I may as well talk about it. Uh, like I envision my set as, a, as I start to play, play out more. I really want to have like a uh, pretty, you know, pretty significant guitar setup, like an electric guitar with an amp and some, you know, uh, digital effects that are being run either through the iPad or maybe through a laptop if I have to, but uh, ideally very, very simple. But for instance, to make beats on the iPad and then play live guitar over top of it. Like, I think that would be a really indicative of bridging the gap between those two worlds. So um, I'd say you're going to start seeing a lot of bands that have uh, an iPad DJ in them. Yeah, like, yeah. That's going to be coming. And uh, especially if that video component stuff can come through, then I think that's going to be that's going to be huge. But um, but yeah, I'd say keep your eyes peeled when you go to see live music. I think you'll be seeing a lot of these devices used in the sets. Awesome! Can't wait. 
Thank you so much. This was really fun. I really enjoyed talking about this stuff. (laughs) Awesome. Thanks so much for talking to us. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care.